You can't go wrong with this amazing San Julian cover. And the story is full of action and adventure, plus evil necromancers. Shout out to the patrons that got this video a whole week early. Head on over to patreon.com slash vmcampos and pledge for $3.33 a month. What a deal! Hello and welcome to the weekly VM Campos comic book club. I'm your host, VM Campos. This is the podcast where I review a comic book new or old from my collection and rate it on the factors of the cover art, interior art, plot, and enjoyability of the book on a scale of 1 to 5. And then I tell you to get it or shred it. This week I'm reading San Julian's Queens of the Lost World, number 1, published in 2023 by Opus. So, as usual, a little bit of uh, background information before we start the main review. This is a new story based on San Julian's painting, Queens of the Lost World. It's a basically swords and sorceries and zombies, Red Sonia style of epic, full of dragons and necromancers and the like, published by the company Opus. The name of the book comes from San Julian, also known as Manuel Perez Clemente, a Spanish painter of fantasy art. He's been around since the 60s on the global stage in the U.S. in the 70s. He's done covers for creepy and eerie and heavy metal, Vampirella, and many, many, many novels in the world of fantasy. His art serves as the inspiration for a brand new ongoing series. Over at a publisher that I had not really heard of, Opus, although I've started to see their stuff being published recently, so I think they're a new publisher. The Indicia does state this is copyright Incendium LLC and then published by Opus. And further down on the logo, it says Opus, art inspired stories from Incendium. Incendium. So there must be some background information there that I have to know a little bit more about. But that's a good amount of background information. Cover art. Right away, this is a 5 out of 5. As soon as I saw this art on the uh, Previews World website, I added it to my pull list. San Julian is an artist who is this classic painter of fantasy, swords and sorcery, demons and devils and vampires, beautiful ladies, powerful men beasts not to be trifled with, both real and imaginary. And so when I heard that new stories are being published based on his artwork, I had to get the series. And is this not a beautiful, amazing wall book to enjoy? Look at this cover. We have this raven-haired warrior with a golden shield and big sword, and these beautiful green and blue tones contrasting with some fiery tones and supple skin tones. This is a 5 out of 5 cover. Now, interior art is not by San Julian. If that were the case, the book would never come out, because how are you going to publish a monthly comic full of many, many panels and story art and all of that? No, the interior art is by Silvia Califano, and it's also very, very enjoyable. It is a realistic, cartoony style that has a variety of interesting panel layouts. Here we have a full page where one of the main characters sneaks up behind some uh, messengers. We've got another character elsewhere battling the undead. And again, I like this panel layout. We've got these small panels here, a big one in the middle, breaking out of any borders. The zombies get the better of her, so there's a smaller panel, and then gloop! There's some fun sound effects that go out through the whole book as well. We switch over to a day scene where we see this kingdom. It was built in the Crater of the Dragons. Another main character that appears. Now, I do have to say, I found it a little bit difficult, so this might be a story point later on. I found it a little bit difficult to differentiate the main characters. There's three female main characters, which are the good ones, and then there's like two villainous ones later on, and they're all a little too similar that I kind of had a hard time on the first read-through to tell the difference between one badass warrior and another badass warrior and the queen... So I think there could have been a slightly better way to differentiate them. They're all brunettes. Would it have killed you to have a redhead in there? You can never have enough redheads. But anyways, we're seeing on the panel layout. Look at this. This is amazing. The zombie's being cut in half. And it's just this black blur with copious amounts of violence. And here's one of the st -st 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 stab sound effects. Hack. So that's fun. Also, this uh, silhouetted panel is very nice. 
So we get this grimy, dark place contrasting with the kingdom and a fiery memory. Anatomy is very good, expressions as well. This is a 5 out of 5 art. It's not San Julian level art, which would have been a 6 out of 5, but Califano does a very good job. One little quibble here. This is an amazing two-page spread that would have been great as the actual centerfold so that we don't have the center page cut off here. Although there's no way or there's no ads that would have gotten in the way to change the order of things, but that would have been a great center spread. I don't think we could have reversed these. Actually, because we are jumping back and forth on the narrative, we could have had the reveal here as the centerfold, and then we move this action later on. But I guess it's talk, it's action, it's plot. So what do I know? I don't make comics. But anyway, this is a five out of five art. Script. We've got Leia Moore and John Ripion, who worked on uh, Doctor Who. And this is an epic story about a dragon kingdom and the queen that rules. But the alliance might be fraying. So we have to set up a messenger and a cross and a double cross. We get all these characters introduced and political machinations and the powers of the dragons are fading and all of this interesting stuff. Now, I do have to give the story, on the one hand, a 5 out of 5. It's a great, enjoyable story. I can't wait to read the next issues. But then I have to ding it and take it down to a 4, perhaps, because as I said, it, it was very hard to keep track of who I was dealing with. At the very beginning here, we have this main character, and then suddenly she's being attacked in a graveyard. Nope, that's not the same character. This is Furia, and this is Busca. This is, uh, these are two different characters, Furia and Busca. Again, they're very, very similar. Even their armor is very similar. So I had a hard time understanding who was who. And eventually I figured out we're also jumping back and forth in memories and in sort of side quests. And the story kind of goes back and forth. It is a little too non-linear for my tastes, where we're jumping back and forth with all this action. It would be interesting to buy a second copy of the book and then cut out all the pages and put them in order. Although a lot of the action is concurrent, but some things that happened in the past, but then that's happening in the now. And yeah, we kind of jump around a lot story-wise. And then a memory within a memory, now that I think about it, this is a flashback within a flashback because the queen makes an alliance with Busca before the main first pages, but then we've got a memory of the queen defeating all the enemies. So yeah, story-wise, uh, I guess I'll, I'll end with a four and a half on the plot. Enjoyability of the book. This is a five out of five. Very enjoyable. Even though now I have to wash my eyes out with bleach because here we have an evil skeleton getting busy with the necromancer and uh, <laughs> I totally agree. Very enjoyable book, even though it's a bit too non-linear. It's enjoyable enough that I can't wait for issue two, especially with another beautiful cover. This one is by Ariel Olivetti. We've got a cover gallery where you can see Olivetti's version of issue number one. Very cool. Again, this makes you think it's the same person, but I'm just dumb. Then we have the San Julian cover, which is all of this is inspired by. Amazing. And then also the Santi Casas cover, where we see the queen and her warrior. So a modern take on that classic painting there. So yeah, very enjoyable book. And this whole new San Julianiverse is upon us, as well as the Frank Frasettiverse, all thanks to this company, Opus. And therefore, should you get it or shred it, definitely get it. Just make sure you read it and reread it and take notes and pay attention to the plot and don't lose track of the characters. You'll really, really enjoy it. And you want to come back to see what else happens in this world of swords and sorcery, dragons, and pretty ladies with swords. And once again, shout out to the patrons. They saw this video a whole week ago. If you want to be cool like them, you head over to patreon.com slash vmcampos, hit, the, hit that join button, and there's only one tier, $3.33 a month. More affordable than a cup of coffee and 10 times more nutritious. Pledge to the channel. Keep it funded. Keep it going. Be a part of it. I would really appreciate it. But if you can't quite pledge at the moment, no worries. Simply like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that good stuff. I may have to send Busca after you if you don't. And so this week I read San Julian's Queens of the Lost World number one, published in 2023 by Opus. This has been the weekly VM Campus Comic Book Club, and I'll see you next week.